In this video, we're going to talk about ordered lists. So our ordered lists are going to extend what we saw in our lists classes, and we're going to add a method add that's going to add the method in the correct spot. Now, you'll notice that this interface, ordered list ADT, is going to extend the list ADT, meaning if you implement ordered list ADT, you have to have all the methods that are in list ADT. The only new method then is going to be add. Our array ordered list is going to extend array list and it'll implement the ordered list abstract data type. Now we have two choices here. Since this extends array list, we're going to get all the methods that are already there automatically. We could also use containment instead of inheritance here, which would slightly change up the methods a little bit. And it might be worth it for you to try to change the class to do that on your own, where instead of inheritance, you have a data member that's an array list and that'll slightly change up the way the methods work. So we can create an empty ordered list, and we can also specify an initial capacity, which is what, which defines the size of that underlying array that's in the array list. And notice in either case, we just call the super constructor because all the initial list setup is handled already in the array list class. So the only new method here is add, and you'll notice we're expecting the element to be a comparable element. And this instance of checks to see that that element implements the comparable interface. If it's not, we throw an exception because we're going to have to compare elements to determine where something goes in the list. Then we're going to create a comparable element that has a comparable type. And notice we do this cast here. And this is to ensure that we can call compare to with our elements. Just like with add in the array list class, if we're going to add to the list, we need to be able to expand its capacity. And again, that's already given to us in the array list class. So we just call expand capacity if we have a full list. And then here's where the real logic of the method comes in. We're going to iterate through the entire array. So we're going to start at index zero. And we're going to increment scan until either we reach the rear of the list, meaning there's nothing less to look, or while what we're looking for is larger than what's stored at the location of the list we're looking at. Now we can stop at that point because this is an ordered list. Everything is stored in order. So once what we're looking to add is greater than the item we're looking at, that indicates that this is where we're going to actually add the element in the list. So now we need to make space for the new element. So we're going to shift all the elements after it. So notice we start at the rear and we're going to go from the rear down to wherever that spot is that we've, we found to put in the element. And we're going to shift everything over to the right one slot. Now, once we've done that, that opens up a place in the array to put the new element and that's at the index scan. And once we've done that, we need to take care of some array list things. We increment the rear, we increment the mod count to indicate that we have changed the list and that completes our implementation. So for the link ordered list, you're gonna follow the same logic. Now the book doesn't give you the solution to that. And this is a really, really good practice for you to try, but the logic is still the same, except that you don't have to do that shift. What you're going to do is you're going to insert the new element in the correct location. And the algorithm to do that is, is listed in the notes. It's a really good practice to try, but we won't do that for now. So I'm going to create an ordered list ADT reference. That way I can use either an, an array ordered list or a linked ordered list. It's going to hold integers. And I'm going to initialize the size to two just to show you that that'll get updated as we go. And I'm going to make a random number generator. And then I'm going to have a loop. That's going to first get a random number. And I'll do a random number between one and a hundred. And then I'll add that to the ordered list.
Oops, I have a missing quote here. And I'll use the toString method of the ordered list class. So now if I run this, you can see that even though I added these in random order, they come out in the correct order. And that's because the add method of the of the ordered list class looks for where it goes in sorted order. So let's run this again. Yeah, so you can see I get different numbers each time, but they're always in order. We'll do an unordered list next and you'll see the difference that that makes.